in from the Windy City, it's time for JW Fusion with your hosts, James and Wendy B. Welcome to this week's broadcast of JW Fusion. I am your co-host, J.H. Copper de Bonds, and I'm here with the awesome and magnificent Wendy B. The one and only who is right so much. I love the way you write so <laughs> I much. That. I love the way you <laughs> love that. This we week, try and keep that going, baby. Are you excited this week? Oh wait, we, uh, with with this we, guest, we have got our yes. favorite guest. Yes, he indeed. Is we, all of that. We finally got him back in the house. Yes, Doctor Rob Thompson. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for coming again. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. I, I just. I'm so humbled that you guys would even want me to come and. Are you kidding me? We're humbled. That we've been you, we've been um, every ever since you were here last time. We've been waiting. We gotta get him back. Gotta we gotta get him back. gotta get him back. <laughs> Sing the song. Gotta yeah. get him back. Gotta, gotta get him get back. Him. And look at here, <laughs> he's back. Like a song actually. Gotta get him back. I'm so sure there's one. Gotta get one. him back. There's gotta yeah. be something there. I haven't found it yet. But <laughs> <laughs> we well, we made up one because we wanted you to come back. Yeah, well, we thank did. You. Thank and you. We appreciate it. Very kind. Very kind. Thank you. And today's topic is so important too. Yeah, talking about the significance of fatherhood, fathers, mentorship, and one reason that that is so significant for us is I know my dad, he had to leave Chicago. I think I've told hurry. you he had to leave in a hurry. Fast. He was, my dad was selling real estate that wasn't his. I don't know how he managed to do that, but he made a lot of money doing it. Can you it. imagine how smart a guy's got to be to you be able to, to do be, something you have like to that? Be. My dad continuously, not oh, just absolutely. once. He, did. he yeah. was selling real estate, making money on real estate that was not his. Mm -hmm. FBI was looking for him, and they never caught him. He, he was, which is another. He has to be smart. He relocated. To not be caught. He relocated. Established a new identity. Got new social security number, new driver's license. Back when the technology wasn't Back, readily available for that. The technology wasn't that. what it is now. But, but they, he figured it out. He, he did it. and That's like um, an amazing <clears throat> thing. I just, yeah, he, I, I sit in awe of people like that. Oh, my that. gosh. He, think, boy, if they just channeled that, the first, I mean, for just good, how they many people done. they could have had. Oh, yeah. 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 I had to be, yeah. when I was doing real estate, I was, I, I bought a lot of real estate. I had millions of dollars in real estate. And I had to be careful because you know apples don't fall far mm -hmm. from the tree mm -hmm. so i was very cautious because some of the guys i wound up doing business with one guy went to jail treasury department shut down his website mm. told him stop doing what you're doing he kept doing it and they locked him up another guy i was partners with took hundreds of thousands of dollars that we'd made on our on our deals that we'd done he stole all the money and took off wow. now i would rather had been the person stolen from Definitely. than the person that did the stealing. Because yeah. you do things like that, it catches up with you. You have to constantly look over your yeah, shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, but my point was that um, didn't have the father in the home. Mm -hmm. So my mom was a great mom. I grew up fast mm -hmm. because at the age of 12, I could cook a whole dinner. I can I'm cook a Sunday dinner that. at 12 years old. I'm very thankful I know you for are. that skill. She likes I can cook. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> at 12 years old. <laughs> I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful. <laughs> I mean, I cook, I would bake a chicken, rice aroni, dressing, uh, vegetables. I even made a cake one Sunday. My oldest brother came over. He said, you cooked all of this? I said, yeah. I started cooking when I was eight. Eight years old, I could iron a king-size sheet at eight years old. Wow. Without the cat faces in it. That's what they call the them. The cat. Is that what cat they faces? call them? The from the burns? Faces. From the scorch marks? No, the cat faces when you when you iron it and it When you turn up. it, yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, my mother didn't pay. Wow, I, I had to do that. I had to do that, yeah, a, do that just too. a little bit earlier oh, than you did. Oh, oh yeah. wow. See, see, see. Well, see. because, I mean, if you wanted to have anything ironed, you had to iron it. Yeah. Well, if you wanted to have anything to eat, you had to cook it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. If, so, you, if you wanted the house clean, you had to clean it. Mm. Without, if you wanted things yeah. vacuumed, you had to do it yourself. You had to vacuum it. If you wanted the garbage picked up off the floor, then pick it up. You were picking it up. That's wow. right. That's right. And you, and you always worked. I did. Just to I make somebody proud of you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I and started. They, and they never knew how to give it to you. Yeah. Right. They didn't have, some people just don't have that capacity, unfortunately. Yeah. Because of That's where true. they came from. Because my That's dad true. was in the home. Yeah. His body, you know, he was physically there. 
And my dad, was, my dad was, was such it. an interesting thought. Yeah, he was physically. He was there, but just never. Yeah, he wasn't that's, there. That's that's. I think that's worse. Yeah, I, yeah, I, that could be worse. Well, I, I I'm pretty sure it is. I think I, I think over all of the years of that I've I've had the privilege of doing what I do, I've recognized that people are more tormented by. Um, By a non-present father, mm-hmm. mm. okay, or a silent father, mm-hmm. okay, than they ever were without having one there. The okay, one. because yeah. most of the time the children will actually become what the mother needs mm-hmm. when there's no father present. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when there is a father present and the mother never does anything to be able to get his involvement, it mm-hmm. brings disappointment not only in the father but mm-hmm. also in the mother just as well. I agree. Yes, yeah, true. That's true. That's why this show is so important. Mm. Celebrating fathers, the the real fathers, mm. the fathers who are present in their children's lives, who who are active, yeah, um, in their children's. We lives. know what's interesting is my mother remarried eventually, and uh, my stepfather, he was not as my my dad was six three, handsome, smart, charismatic. Mm-hmm. The guy my mother married was five six. You know, not she a real handsome guy. He was a hardworking guy. Yeah. And what I what that what he taught me was I watched him work. I mean, literally, I would watch him because my mother and my stepfather had a garden. It had to be maybe an acre or two out in Chicago Heights. Wow. Wow. And they worked That's that huge. garden. I mean, they would come home with all kind of vegetables. They would buy a half cow, cut it up, put it in the freezer, and um, so what I learned from him was watching him work, physically mm-hmm. work. And I, w- I duplicated that mm-hmm. on my job. The first job I got, I was um, had a job cleaning up around the building where we lived. I made $17.50 a month. Uh, in a month? Uh, in a month. Back in 1968, wow. I was making big money. Seven. You was rich. Me and Billy Hawkeye. I love Billy Hawkeye. <laughs> that was I my love buddy, Billy, Billy Hawkeye. Hawkeye. We made we made thirty five dollars between us. We would split it. Go to sixty third and host it. Buy some silk and mohair pants. Lord help them. See, the I used to go to Smokey Joe's. Smokey Joe's. I would go to Smokey Joe's. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, see. Well, I don't know what to say. Smokey to Joe's is the place to go. <laughs> That's right. Smokey That's, Joe's. There you go. There he you remembers the commercial. Then. <laughs> oh yeah. This wow. My, this is my brother from another mother. I see. <laughs> Just relating. I'm gonna just listen. I, I don't know I what mean, y'all talking about because that that was the thing back then. Mm-hmm. You know, my mother didn't have money for that, but I made that. I would save my money, and I would go down there. And but what I learned from him was a work ethic. Mm-hmm. And when I got my first job at Stuart Warner while I was in college, I worked. I mean, I worked hard, and they saw that mm-hmm. and they liked that. They said this guy's going to school and he's working harder than the people who just get up and come to work. Right. You know, and so that served me um, for the, for the, for my whole life, really, because, you know, I can be a workaholic. You know yes, that. Yes, dear, I know that. The old boy. It's yeah. Waiting. yeah. <laughs> so I suppose you have to ask the question, which would you rather? I, I have zero <laughs> complaints. <laughs> None at all. Because like I said, I, I, just I, grew up, up I grew up in a household <laughs> where he was laying up in the crib, right, right. Yeah. and wasn't well, contributing to the household. Well, so I, I have no problem no, with working. Wendy, I'll tell you in a minute. I Listen, you grinding? Listen, go ahead on. Do your I don't thing. mess with a BMW is what I say. Oh, black, man right. black man working. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. The biggest <laughs> problem is, honey, where would you like the key to your new Benz? So that's hey, right. That's yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm good. That's, that's right. right. That's right. So how can we help? people out there now who are fathers who aren't fathers who didn't have a father present you know growing up whether they were there and not there or actually weren't there just come into a place where they are comfortable with who they are despite their background and maybe if they're male become a better father than what they experienced or didn't even have the experience or that you know that um, someone to to reflect growing up how do we help people like that well, it seems to me, uh, as I mentioned, after years of of study, after years of different ways of looking at things, I've I've just dis- discovered that 
you have to start at a place where you refuse to deny where you've been. Mm. Stop trying to pretend that, you know, that you came from, you know, the, uh, the proverbial other side of the tracks. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, okay. Then, and then from there, you can begin to build. Y- you have to choose where you're going to get your information from. Who do you access for the kinds of things that you want to know about being a father? What do you consider being a strong father or a good father to really be? Mm-hmm. And, and to realize that in order to be a good father, it's going to take fidelity. Mm. Infidelity is a huge problem now. It, it's a huge problem. It's accepted between, almost, um, it seems. Like in society, you, in society, it's like almost accepted or expected even. I think it's more expected than yeah. accepted. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, you know, I think that's really true, Wendy. I, but I think that once you choose to have children, you realize that it is good for a child to have a father and to have a mother. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, there's yeah. a reason think, why there is both. It's a very, it's a very interesting thing. You know, in, in the Caucasian community, you can say something about somebody's mother, but you Ooh. can't say anything about somebody's father. Oh. But in the African-American it's community, the opposite. you can never talk about somebody's mother. No. It's a fight. Somebody's, a oh, fight. yeah. I mean, That's you're a, a physical fight. Yeah. fight. And, and the reason why is because it, it is because wow. the different ones had different levels of input mm-hmm. into a person's life. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I understand life the same way that you you do in in the fact that my my father was present. He was just absent. Right. Wow. Yeah. You know, he didn't really say very much. I mean, his idea of a good life was go to work every day, Mm -hmm. um, come home, have three, four, six beers. Wow. And then wait till the weekend and drink a case. Oh, wow. Wow. So that was where it was. I. Um, thus, uh, my, I believe that my dad actually was beaten emotionally by my mother to the point to where she got to do whatever she wanted to do. Mm. Oh, okay. And that happens. That, well, it, it does. It, it you just does. give up, like, whatever. It, it does. But yeah. there are so many things, so many benefits that happen to a person, to happen to a young person mm-hmm. who has a father present. The mm-hmm. first thing is, is that Girls that have a father present don't get pregnant out of wedlock. Right, because they're not seeking love in, a, in a, the opposite sex because they didn't receive it from their dad. Exactly. Yeah. An, another thing is is that is the children that have a father at home are less likely to have substance abuse. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's true. Very That's true. true. And the big thing for us in the geography that, that we live in is that kids that have a father at home are less likely to ever get incarcerated. Mm. Mm. They yeah, don't get in trouble. They don't stats. get. They don't get in trouble with the law. Yeah. When when your dad, man, because I tell you what, you can argue with your mom. Oh, yeah. But you didn't. You didn't mess with your dad. No, no I did. Right, because it's funny. Um, my sister and I, our sons are six months apart, and <laughs> she would tell her son, "I'm a, you know, he's doing whatever." She's like, "I'm gonna tell your father." He immediately straightened up. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I, I'm sorry. I won't. That's I, it. I, yeah. I didn't mean it. Yeah. Whatever it takes, just please don't yeah. call. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I noticed that difference. Like, because if you told me you was going to call my father, okay, well, if he answers. If, yeah, right. If he's, if he's you know, there. One, if one he's there, the, right. Yeah. The, one of the interesting stories that I think that will kind of show you what I'm saying is that when I was 11 years old, I'd already begun to... Uh, refine the art of stealing mm. by the time I was 11. And um, and so I got caught by a camera. Oh. And when I got when I got caught, I you know, they they told me they were going to tell my mother. Well, that didn't you know that was <laughs> that was <laughs> fine, but but anyway, I mean, it was three blocks, so they actually okay. let me walk home. They called her, okay, told her what the story was, and then they were going to let me walk home. So wow. okay. she met me. She she met me about a block and a half. We both made oh, it in the about middle. a block wow. and a half. Yeah. 
and she met me with a um, with an electric cord. Ooh. Oh, and she whipped me with both hands. Ooh. By that time we got home, I'm bleeding. Yeah, yeah. You know, all because you, you remember the old coffee pots. Oh yeah, they had you yeah. know yeah. they had the... some pretty thick mm-hmm. yeah uh, electric cords on them, uh, and. When she could no longer swing with either hand, she started kicking me oh, wow. under the table. That was my mom. Uh-huh. Well, my dad, when my dad would get home, it, you know, I mean, I, I actually thought like if, if she is going to be like he this, oh me, my right? gosh, like, <laughs> like if I if I live, yeah, yeah, if I live, yeah. it'll be it'll be it'll be good. Yeah, you know, I'll make yeah. it over. But when my dad got home. The thing he said to me, he looked at me and he said, Rob, I'm really disappointed in you. Oh. And the only thing that I wanted from word. him was a beating. But he had to beat me worse than she did. Yeah, that sentence yeah. is powerful. Because that. Because you want your parents to, to be proud of you. Well, like you were saying because, because a, a strong father figure in the life of a child gives them something that they actually can be proud of in their future. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yes, I want to be you like know, my dad. Yeah, yeah. like like yeah. my dad. I'm like like my like my my grandfather. My mm-hmm. and because that does something for children, we we love our mothers and mm-hmm. we celebrate them and we put them sure. and we raise them up. Mm-hmm. But there is, um, you know, and with all respect, I I say these things to our audience, and that is that, you know, the Bible never really refers. To God as your mother. No. Right. No. May refer. I mean, we, we find in society that that the earth is referred to as a mother, but mother. it never refers to God right. as your mother. Right. So that's the reason why that we find the the relationships that people have with with God mm. to be somewhat of a reflection of the relationship that they had with their father. Yes. Okay. Yes. And yes. so so all I wanted my dad to do is I want him to beat me. Yeah. Okay. I, I, re- I, I and I mean that may seem funny to some people, but that was the only way that I could tell that my father loved me. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of people's stories. I would say that they carry even into their adulthood. Oh gosh, I mean, you, you know, know, I'm I'm 33 at least now, so <laughs> you know, so I mean, I I do I I carry those things, yeah. but but those those few things. I mean, our our kids. I mean, if you're gonna make them. Yeah, you need to rear them if you're going to make them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Either that, either that, you, there's other ways you can find to be able to satisfy yourself sexually instead of yeah. rape. Yeah. And instead, and there are other ways that a girl can can actually get the kind of love that they need to where they don't have four or five kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, on their hips. Yeah. Right. I agree from with three or four I different agree. fathers. I yeah. agree. They. Yeah. Um, th- there's just other ways to do that, but a father. A father really is, um, although a mother creates the home, the father actually becomes the umbrella mm-hmm. of the, protector. the home. I agree. He provides a, a, a foundation that everybody can feel safe. He creates an environment of safety, security. Um, I read a book once, and it talked about the different levels of the things that are important to a woman as far as a relationship, and number one was security. It is. If security yeah. was ahead of good looks, love, romance, sex, security. Ask your mom. She'll tell you. Yeah. 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 I mean. And I'm, security has, security only has a little to do with financial security. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, it's not just fraction. finance. It's, it's, security it's, is a feeling. Security is a, is, is a closeness. Security is, is, is a melting into one another yes when yes. when a father walks in and I, and I know that's true from my environments when I'm not around my environments they'll go they'll go nuts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but the minute that I walk into my environments those environments all straighten up straighten right yeah. up it's you know? the same thing a, a pastor has that with 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 his flock um I remember when I was first born again when pastor Hinton would as soon as he spoke you felt it's like, mm-hmm. 
you know, I'm yeah. at home. I'm home. Yeah, he's home. Yeah, I'm yeah. home. And yeah. it's the same thing now with Family Harvest. Mm -hmm. When Pastor Rob comes in, when he said as good as the other speakers may be, it can be, it's kind of like when your uncle George comes over mm -hmm. or your uncle Sam or your older brother, uh, like my older brother Billy. You know, my, my, my father and my oldest brother, they both, my oldest brother six 6'4", my dad was 6'3". Mm -hmm. But they were both tall guys, you know, very, you know, handsome, you know, Im imposing kind of guys. But he wasn't my father. Right. And so when Billy would come over, it's not the same. When someone else, it's not the same as when it's your dad. Mm -hmm. There's a different vibe that happens mm -hmm. when that father comes in. It's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. And Even I've, in a secular home. Oh, secular! It has a, yeah. It, it, yeah. it because it's yeah. a, yeah. it's something God put in us. Mm -hmm. It's something God put in us. He designed us. He designed the family and intended, I believe, for it to operate, following certain principles that were instituted before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that when He formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into His nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, God had envisioned what the family would look like. He knew what Eve would look like, mm -hmm. you know, because I believe God doesn't sure. begin anything until he's finished. Mm -hmm. So he saw it all. And what's happened, that's the problem that, that's in our society right now. People have gotten away from God's model of what the family should, what it should look like. You know, we, mm -hmm. I mean, regardless of the race, the culture, the nationality, the principles are the same, and it's going to work all over the world. You know, there's one other, um, one other statistic, I mean, that studies have actually come out and said. And I think that, this, that you'll find this the one to be interesting, and that is that children that grow up in a home without a father are four times more likely to be poor. Mm. Mm. That's wow. a powerful stat. That's, you yeah. know what? On our street where I grew up, mm -hmm. we, in our building, we had... The people upstairs, they had a, they had their dad was there, and the people up on the other side, they had the larger apartment, they had a car, mm. you know, and um, the, but the majority of the people on our block, um, even back in the '60s when I was growing up, they a lot of them didn't have a dad, mm -hmm. and I went when my mom passed in 2000, uh, my younger brother Mike and I went through the old neighborhood. And some of those guys who didn't have a dad, they're still there. They're, they're still, still there. yeah. sitting on the porch mm. at their mother's house because mm. that's where they live. Mm -hmm. They haven't As adults. They haven't changed from what they were. This is in two thousand. Mm -hmm. They haven't changed from what they were doing in nineteen seventy three. That's right. Wow. And I, t I said, Mike, these guys are still sitting on the porch, and I was so grateful to God because. By then, I'm making, you know, I was doing pretty good. I had, a, had me a Lexus truck, and Mike's doing well over there in London. Mm -hmm. He was doing good deals. And, and we, we realized that we had been blessed that in spite of the situation that we started out in, I really believe the fact that my mother remarried, even though um, he wasn't our biological father, he was a father image a strong father image yeah and he was he wasn't as you know educated he wasn't as suave as my dad was but the spirit mm -hmm. that spirit of a of, of there's a fathering spirit you know regardless of how it's expressed mm -hmm. you know and i think that made a difference because my brother and i we we managed to escape that. My sister didn't because he was a head like a rock. <laughs> but we did. And yeah. a lot of the guys we grew up with, they they didn't a lot of them didn't make it out alive. A lot of them mm -hmm. got shot, they got locked up, all mm -hmm. kind of things. So having that image in the home, there's a spiritual thing that happens, I believe, that's important when you have children. It's essential, I would go so far as to say. So my question would be to both of you, because you both had father dynamics that weren't ideal growing up, correct? How does one come from the backgrounds that you guys have and change it 
to be a strong father figure in your home, whereas a lot of people, they don't. They, they either repeat it or say like a female, she's bumbling around, like you said, having four or five kids by different dads. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you explain it to someone like, you know, I didn't have a dad in my home or my dad was whatever. How do you turn that around? Like you said, you have that spiritual image. You have that person in the house. But some people, I don't know, just sit back on the excuse of like, well, I don't know what a real father looks like. So I've been looking for, quote unquote, baby daddy or a father for my children. And I keep messing up because I don't mm -hmm. have an example. But you guys had different backgrounds where you could have said the same thing, but you didn't. So what made it different? And how can someone listening here and they have that background like we did and turn it around? Male or female? Well, James, why don't you start on this one? Okay. Uh, for me, first of all, let me, let me say this. My stepfather, I didn't see him as my father. I did not see him as a father figure because he had a drinking problem. He, he, was, he was a lot of different things, you know. But the, the fact that he was a, a hardworking man projected something onto me. Mm -hmm that I didn't understand what it was. I didn't know how he imprinted me like that mm -hmm. because I didn't view him as my dad, mm -hmm. you know. But I made a decision that I would not make a promise to my kids that I didn't keep. I made a decision I was not gonna be the kind of father that my father was. And to this day, I've told you, Jimmy's 39, he'll be, he'll be 40 this year. Wow. And so he, you can ask him right now, has your dad ever told you that he was going to do something that he didn't do? Mm -hmm. Same thing with Margaret. They will tell you, my dad has never promised me anything that he didn't deliver on, even if it was a butt whooping. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I kept that promise. They said, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you, know? you took it a step but further. I made a, but you I know, had to you, make a decision. You made that decision, I made but a then decision. you did more than that. You were present. Yeah, you you instilled in them. I was a single them. parent, right? So I'm saying you instill some things in them. So you took it even further than I did. You know, being able to keep your I word. Made a, I made a decision when when my kid's mother and I when she left, I I told her I said you're not taking the kids. I'm keeping the kids with me, and so they didn't miss a beat because I cooked every mm -hmm. day. I picked them up from school, I uh, took them to school, brought them home. I went to work at night. My sister stayed with them while I worked nights. I worked like 11 hours a night mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at the place where I worked. And I cooked, took them to school, went to the port card meetings, all of that stuff. Took them to the doctor, uh, watched Margaret throw up in the hallway trying to figure out how am I going to clean this up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But what, what, what it did was that I set an example. And as you see, you see the kind of father that, that Jimmy is. Jimmy's a is. phenomenal father. He's, a pheno he's duplicating to another level what I did. Mm -hmm. And Margaret's a great mother. Mm -hmm. She'd have made the best decisions, but she's a great mother. Mm -hmm. And so I made a decision that I would not be that kind of father because I know and I firmly believe that I, it I would have been better. Mm -hmm. I would have been more confident, I think. I don't know, maybe not. Because once I got born again, that changed everything. Mm -hmm. That changed everything. But your stepdad at least gave you that beginning yes of something to, did. to strive he did. for and he did so we're gonna have to um get get pastor rob's response after the commercial break well you know what pastor rob, we're gonna pick it up with pastor rob after this commercial break but um those of you that's listening um we're doing this show because not just because it's near father's day or anything like that but the father is the foundation of the home and when you acknowledge that as a father and you accept your responsibility as a father and you step into that role, there's a blessing from the Lord mm -hmm. that comes with that. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of people aren't prospering because they're not being who and what God called them to be. When you decide to have a child, there's a calling that comes. But Pastor Rob is going to pick even it up. Even if you don't decide to become even a father. If you don't. <laughs> yes, yes, you're a is. father, so you need to pick that up. We'll be back right after this message. This book is the story of Jameson Harold Donovan. 
who lives in the city of Sussex Falls. Feeling trapped in his dysfunctional marriage to his wife and a stranger to his own children, thoughts of suicide dominate his waking hours. Jameson discovers he was selected before birth by the Almighty to receive quasi-angelic abilities between the ticks of the clock. You're listening to JW Fusion with your hosts, James and Wendy B. We are back with Dr. Rob Thompson, the one and only, our favorite guest of yes, all time. Definitely. If we had a Hall of Fame, would we put him there? He'd be right there. He'd be number one. Yes. Maybe we need to start a wall. I think we should. <laughs> we'll call it the Wall of Fame. What you can't, wall of fame. What you the can't wall do of is fame. tell me something like that because I start working. Yeah, I will. start thinking my yes, mind. You come back going. like, oh, she did a wall. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Hey, Look at that. It was a good idea. <laughs> well, Pastor Bob, we, we left off with Wendy's question, so you pick it up. You know, Wendy, can you rephrase your question to me? I I, I want to give a kind of a fresh perspective on it. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking for. A lot of people making an excuse. I don't know what a real father or a good father is because I didn't have one or I didn't have a father. And so people are out there. And I think a lot of times women, will. we've been raised, myself included, that we're going to handle it. We're going to be the mother and the father. And that's not Well, we're idea. facing that in society right exactly. now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to empower men but also let women know we need to let the men, the good men, be that father figure. But we have so many people, like the three of us, we didn't have the ideal father figure in our lives. So how can we help? Like you are a great father, but you didn't necessarily have the example of one. So what turned it for you when you started having children to, to be like, I'm gonna be a good father? You don't have the example, but you figured it out. It can be figured out, you don't have to, use that as your excuse of why you're not being a good father or why you're not allowing the man to be a good father. How do you change that in the person's mind so that they can become that good father at whatever point it is? Well, there's a, there's a number of ways to do it, but I'll tell you how I had the privilege of being able to do what I did. Mm -hmm. And that is that I, I believe that anyone can do this, you know, when you don't have the right examples, you know, I mean, I can give you, I can give you the book. I can give you the book stuff, mm -hmm. you know, the book stuff is you, you search out for, you search out for an example. You look for a mentor, you look for a coach, you look for somebody who's actually done that before. And then you try to get as close as you possibly can. But all of that is a prophylactic on the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, okay. that's all that that Definitely. really is. I mean, you you have all the experience, but it just never produces anything. You know, um, the and so the the way that I would consider that it would be good for easy and easy for any one of our listeners to be able to think of, and that is, look at what's in front of you, and that will tell you exactly what you need to be. Because I just had to look at what was in front of me and I discovered what I didn't want. See, most people in life can't, cannot tell you what they want, mm -hmm. but almost everybody can tell you what they don't want. Yes, yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. That's you true. Yeah. And so I, I discovered, so let's say that the father wasn't there. I will be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, father didn't, the father didn't play with his kids. My father never played with the kids. I'm going to play with my kids. Mm -hmm. My father never told me that he loved me. I'm going to tell my kids time after time, day after day, minute right. after minute, yep. how much I love them. Every chance you get, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, you know, my, my father never taught me about money. I'm going to teach my kids about money. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know nothing about money. Exactly. Okay, exactly. I can go. but Okay, but I can learn. You can yes. figure it out. Yes. Yes. That's right. right. I can figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. You see... I really believe that the easiest way for a person to become a good father is to just look at the bad one that they had and discover that they don't want to be that person. And like mm -hmm. you said, and that's, that's how you become simple. that. It is. It's, it's and it's not hard. I mean, otherwise, I mean, I, I realize that we can move our conversation over to 
mentorship and and following after good you know good people and mm-hmm. things that they've done and that's really good but that's really not in many cases where people are mm-hmm. where, where most true. people are in life is that they hey they've got this pile of stuff mm-hmm. on the floor they don't know what to do with that and they and unless they are willing to as we've already mentioned to to say where they are until you admit where you are mm-hmm. you it will only take you that much longer to get where you want to go mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. yeah you know i admit where i am look i stink at this i'm no good at this now that's not an excuse for me that's a reason for me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay right. i've given myself the reason of why i am where i am yeah. okay now we're not going to stay there anymore because what is what has been done to you in life does not determine the outcome. That's exactly. true. It's, That's true. it's exactly. how you respond to what has been done to you that determines your destiny. Mm-hmm. And and every man that's out there, and even every woman who can, as sweetly as possible, just encourage the man in their life to really step up mm-hmm. to the plate. That that individual it's it's how you say what you say it's never what you said it's right. just yeah. how yeah. you said what right. you said yeah. yeah but but for me it was um my mind works in in a way that i despise i don't like the way that life has been dealt to me mm-hmm. but that doesn't change your pattern Right, right. Now you can, through discipline, you can create a new habit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that doesn't change your yeah. patterns. Okay. Right. okay, you still have those patterns, mm-hmm. and and that's the reason why you build your life with the kinds of people that will keep your patterns safe. Yes, you know, and until you can become strong enough to change a pattern, and that takes time to do so. Mm-hmm. So, for me, it is. Um, It's easy, but it's not simplistic. Mm-hmm. It's simple, but not simplistic. How's that? Right. Okay. You know, simple, but not simplistic. I mean, because it takes effort. Mm-hmm. It takes an well, unwillingness. Anything, yeah. anything does take take effort. Change, change it's, requires... It's not- um, it's not the most comfortable feeling because you're going you against something. To. You're going against something that's already a, that, that you've established right. something that you like. You were saying the patterns. This is something you've been doing since you knew how to do anything. And that's a lot of people's excuse. So this is why yeah, I've always this been. Is, this, this is who, who I am. am. This yeah, is who I that's am. right. This is who yeah. I am. No, yeah. no, you're not. Yeah. It doesn't this have is, to be. This is who you have been made. Mm-hmm. This is not who you are. Mm-hmm. Who you are is you have been created in the image of God. Mm. That's who you are. Now, if your mama, your grandma, your dad, your grandfather, <clears throat> excuse me, or anyone else has done that to you, you have genetically been screwed up mm-hmm. like all of us have. Right. You know, a fish has been screwed up when he's on land. Mm-hmm. He's got to get back in the water. But in fact, if he's going to make it, he's going to have to learn how to be able to avoid all the pitfalls of being a fish in water yeah. he needs to be able to avoid yeah. those things and, yeah. and so yeah. and so in in this case what becomes real simple is that if our listeners would only just take a pad of paper mm-hmm. and just write down what they see and then they'll write down what they don't want to be mm-hmm. and and that's where you begin uh to uh, those discoveries sure and the willingness to be able to say, okay, this is what I'm going to change, will actually change the people that access your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when those people access your life in a little bit of a different way, what happens is is that you then are brought into a different room with a different type of clientele, with a different mm-hmm. level of friends, with, okay. with people that have stronger marriages, with people that just, you know, they don't want to go and lay up in the, lay up in the house. They don't want to go down and buy drugs. They don't right. want to actually just kind of like Friday nights go out and party all the time. Mm-hmm. What it is is they get together and they bring their kids together and they start giving their kids the memories that they need because yes. they realize inside their own head that throughout the rest of your life you are living off that reflection Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And that wow. movie that is played for you by the memories that your parents gave you. Mm. Mm. And you're running as hard as you can away from yeah. the consequences of what you know may come okay. if those things happen. Wow. That's wow. powerful. That's that's powerful. That is powerful. And another thing for me, just thinking about fatherhood, is that you have to, the male and the female, you have to decide to be parents despite how the relationship turns out. What's ideal is that you're married and you have a home, uh, you know, the dynamic. Or started out. Or started out, right. That's that's ideal. But just because you're not together anymore does not negate the fact that you still have to be present as a good parent. And you're n- you'll never be friends. I think one of the biggest yeah. problems that one of the biggest <laughs> problems that I hear in society now is that, oh yeah, the kid's mother, and I, and I'll tell you about that because the kid's mother, mm-hmm. but but me, yeah, me and the kid's mother were friends, mm. and and I just say to him, you have it wrong. Mm. You're supposed to hate each other hmm. because you now have ripped into a genealogy. So you need to stay away from that. Well, no, I, I just really think that we can be friends. I didn't say you couldn't be friendly. Right. There's mm-hmm. a difference. There's a you difference. could, yeah. and you couldn't be co-parenting. Mm-hmm. Sure. I said yeah. you're not friends because that means that the breakup of your home, the destruction you brought to your children, that that didn't necessarily really mean very much. Then did it? Mm. Wow. Why in the world do people believe? that they can do whatever they want to do and have their kids pay for it and think their kids are going to be okay they because they're not that. going to be okay. Right. They're not going to be okay. But that thing about mother mother uh, of uh, kids my mother. kids, the yeah. kid's mother, that's exactly what Adam said, hmm. that he named her. Adam named her what? Her name was Adam, remember, until the fall. Hmm. And at the fall, he named her Eve, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like this. What does Eve really mean? She's the mother of my kids. Oh, wow. What happened when the fall came? A family fell apart. Yeah. We just decided to live together, but they could never put it back together ever again. And we are now living with the consequences of that, Mm. trying to put something back together that was broken for us so long ago. And that happens to every one of the young people in this city. Wow. Every one of them. Wow. That's powerful. Man, that's why we need, I mean, the only answer to it, I know for me, um, I was a, a, a pretty good father before I got born again. Mm-hmm. But once I got born again, it took it to another level. It it went to another dimension. Mm. I didn't go to another level. I changed the dresses. I changed. I went to another dimension, and because I understood the relationship. Because see, what happened with me when I got born again, having not had a father for all those years from when I was like ten, not having a. a a, a true father, someone I saw as my father until I was born again mm-hmm. at 27, that that impacted me and it took me a while to get oriented and understand really what a father really meant, what it meant. And once I understood that, I was better able to be that and to, to become that. It's just like like Dr. Thompson said, I looked at the example I'd had mm-hmm. and said, okay, I'm not, I'm, I don't want that. Right. Because it's easy to say what I don't want mm-hmm. other than that Buick LeSabre. I wanted that Buick LeSabre. Oh, Lord, him and his Buick the burgundy one. <laughs> I wanted a Buick LeSabre, man, and uh, that's another lesson. See, I was more of a deuce and a quarter guy myself. <laughs> See, see, I told you he's my brother from another mother. I see, you think I don't? You guys think I don't know this I'm stuff, in the man. Middle, like, I know, what? man. I grew up on the south side. I was there. <laughs> deuce and a quarter. <laughs> deuce and Did a quarter. Leaner, and by the way. way. Leaner. Can you tell That's the right. people That's who, right. who are right. lost as to what a deuce <laughs> and a quarter is? What is a deuce and a, a quarter? A deuce and a quarter is a Buick Electra 225. 225. Oh gosh! 1969. Yep. Electra 225. His whole face is lit up. Two door. 
two door with the two-door, uh, convertible two door. Oh yeah, convertible two door oh, deuce and a quarter, baby. I'm telling you what, there ain't nothing better out there. Oh my gosh, man! If you can find one of those, boy, just live that way. Yeah, yeah. They had a nice, they had a nice motor. What they have a 350, I think they. they I think so. Yeah. Yeah, they were, yeah. And, and you know what, they were just great. With and, and they had the, uh, the the power glide transmission. Remember that the power glide was just the the two speed. They didn't have the three speed at, at, at that time. They didn't have L S and D. They just right, had right, right, L, right. L and yep, D. Yep, yep, L and yep, D. Yep, yeah. Yep, oh yeah. Yep. That oh, was yeah. it. That was oh, it. Oh, we know man. all about that, man. That I'm was glad it. Glad y'all do because I have no well, I idea went, what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I was talking on the last broadcast about how I had asked God for a car, and I saw this uh, Buick LeSabre it was burgundy that I wanted. And I said, Lord, I thank you for this car. I believe I receive it. I had been reading my Kenneth Hagen books and, and and Fred Price and everything, and I I was ready. I went down there to get that car, and they didn't give it to me. I came home. I was upset. I have an attitude with the Lord. I was up. He I told was, you no. My jaws. You was, didn't do your smart goals. That's the problem. I, I guess so. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Man, my jaws was tight. My jaws was tight as a vice grip on a pipe. And so I got That's home. That's pretty good. It was tight. <laughs> I was sitting there on the side of the bed. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been seeking God. I done did this. I done that. And, and I'm going on and on and on. After about 10 minutes of that. He said, are you finished? <laughs> I heard a voice say, James, I'm very disappointed in you. And I felt about this big. And gosh, that was pretty tall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That was really pretty big. Actually, yeah. Actually, and that was taller than I really felt. <laughs> and see, there I go for exaggerating. Again. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened from that? I I, I, I I experienced that that father son relationship because every, everything you ask your dad for, he's not going to give you. He because he sees what you don't see. Right, exactly. He understands if I give you this money without you working for it, you're not going to value it. Mm -hmm. I see if I give you your way, just because it's something you feel is important, you you're going to wind up with a wrong perception of how life is, and so that instant changed me. From that day to this wow. one, this was in 1983. I've been saved about it. I wasn't even saved a whole year yet. Mm -hmm. And I experienced that. And so my, anyway, my point was that when I looked and I saw the different things I didn't want, I also saw God deal with me in a way mm -hmm. with things I did want, his wisdom. Mm -hmm. I used to pray for that. I prayed the wisdom prayer, Ephesians, uh, first chapter of Ephesians that my eyes being enlightened uh, with the, my eyes being enlightened with understanding and, and, and the spirit of wisdom the spirit and revelation, of wisdom and revelation. So that you would know him better. Yeah. And I prayed that prayer constantly every day. I get, matter of fact, I got it from a Ken Hagen book. I prayed that prayer every day mm. till one morning I woke up, there was an angel standing by my bed mm. and I could hear in my head, Isaiah 11 and two, Isaiah 11 and two. And another voice was saying, no, 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 it's Isaiah 11 and 9, Isaiah 11 and 9. Well, I learned God is preeminent. He speaks first or he don't speak. Mm -hmm. He doesn't speak after anybody. And so when I, when I heard that, I, I looked the scripture up. And I said, wow, this is what I've been praying. And the spirit of the Lord should be upon him and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And I was so excited because I said, wow. This is this thing is happening. It's happening. And that wisdom was what I needed to be the father to my kids. Because again, I'm a, I'm a single parent. Right. You know, so I had a lot and I'm working the way I was working. You know, I got a son, a daughter, and, and when Mark got to a certain age, I'm trying to figure out, okay, there's some certain things I uh, <laughs> call my sister up. Some female you know, things. Some yeah. female things. Went to Zare's to get her, her first bra. You went to Zare? 111th Street. <laughs> right Actually, there. I went to the Zales. It was the Zales on 76 and Stone. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah the wow. I went in there, and I said, I need a, <laughs> I need a bar for my daughter. Well, how old is she? She's 12. 
okay, what size does she wear? I, I, I said, well, she's about this tall. And she's about about like this, about this. She's about this, you know. She's not very big. She's you know kind of slender. Yeah. And she's well, what size? I didn't Can't know that bras came in. It didn't occur to me. Yeah. <laughs> they had sizes, you know. Yeah. But my point is that You're I'm trying to learn your ABCs. I'm there. trying to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm learning, and and so as a result of that, though, I began to understand how God can help us mm -hmm. with the things we want as well as it's easy to see what you don't want mm -hmm. but knowing what you want even better yet what you need mm -hmm. God is the source and I think that is essential for any father mm -hmm. is to open your heart to the Lord and allow him to be your father yeah because just like good. Antoine was saying he resisted I guess yeah. we had the other week he resisted yeah um what God was trying to get him to do. He gave in. Mm -hmm. He was blessed from it, but it took a while, mm -hmm. you know. So um, so but, I want to ask about the sing because there are a lot of single mothers raising children. The dad is not there. Like for, for me, from my story, I'm divorced from my children's father, but I have never, no matter how much we liked or didn't like each other, I've never not given him access to his children because I realize the importance of the father being there for his kids. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of stories I hear of women saying that, you know, because they're mad at the dad or he's not doing something right or he wronged her in a certain way, she doesn't give him access to the child. So can you guys speak upon and let people understand on both sides? Because a lot of times the men give up, like she, she won't let me see my kids or, you know, no, he won't do this so he can't see his kids. The, the importance of a father, like the stats that you told us about the father being there. How how can we press upon people the importance of a I mean, a good father, of course, a yeah. good man being present in their children's lives. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's a that's a really really difficult question, yeah. and not difficult because it can't be answered, mm. but difficult because. It's so painful. Yeah. Mm. The answer is painful. Um, I, um, I personally realize how important it is for a child to be in their – or for a father to be in their child's life. Mm -hmm. I look at society and I see what type of – you know, there are attorneys that are out there that are – advocates for fathers mm -hmm. there's all all of these things that are out there and and so uh, I am certain that my feelings about this subject run in do not run in jugsta position to others but in in the counter mm -hmm. okay um, in in this way that if there's a disagreement or a dissolution of marriage there has to be a reason why. Uh, if money is what you're after and child support, then I think that it's um, – the courts have found a way to be able to make all of that work and and you only hear the stories about the deadbeat fathers mm -hmm. right. in our society. Right. And, mm -hmm. and there are some really great guys out there that want to be a part Right. of the lives of their kids right. because it, they just couldn't get along with their mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, and and that, and there's always collateral damage to anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There yeah. always is. Yeah. You know, so I, I am, if there's a mom, a single mom that's out there who she's not getting child support, which is really a large portion sure. of, of people that we would speak to because – um, guys aren't stepping up mm -hmm. to try to be fathers and be responsible. They were irresponsible by hopping the, you know, by hopping on in the beginning, mm -hmm. and right. now, and she wasn't too responsible right. about letting it's him do way. it mm -hmm. because yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. um, I love you means that you take your clothes off. I, I can't figure the two of those out. Mm -hmm. No, I love you means you keep them on, and and I'll just figure this out another way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But 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 I think, and I and I liken it to. Adoption. Hmm. 
And I am not personally, and, and I really hesitate at this, but I'm not personally in favor to a child that's been adopted ever searching for their biological parents. Mm. I believe that it creates a problem. It creates a problem for the people who have uh, given up their life to be able to raise you, mm -hmm. to given up their life to be able to give you an inheritance, mm -hmm. to give you a, a life that you can be proud of. Otherwise, they would have never adopted you in the beginning. Right. That's true. Okay. That's, true. That's number one. Number two, if we have, if a girl has an, an issue, this doctor that I just had mentioned to you about uh, having to protect the assets of her, of her family because the, the father, or the marriage, the father wasn't wanting to be a dad to the child that she just had that she had with him. Oh, wow. And so then we have all that fits in the middle of all of this. And my advice to her was, is that, look, if you have to pay alimony and you're not getting child support, then why in the world would you want to confuse your child mm. by injecting this guy that introduces him to half of his life that is going to take him down the tubes? Mm. Does a mom who's there want their son when they've just been rejected by the father in one way or another. Mm -hmm. and, and hey, this boat goes both ways. Sure, I mean, it does. sure it does. You know, it's in one of the one-way streets. Right. Yeah. And, but you want to force your child into a relationship that you yourself couldn't bear? Mm. I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. You're going to put a five-year-old into a relationship because every time a five-year-old gets... In, in most cases, let me not be absolute because you can catch that. But what we're going to do is we're going to put our kids, we, we put them in school, mm -hmm. we work with them every day, we make sure that they go to bed by 7 o'clock, we make sure that they eat right, we make sure that they do all those things, only to put them out into a person's life that you could not stand to begin with. Mm. Wow. Mm. <laughs> so, if in, so don't fight for... Um, visitation rights. I've I've told people, and I, and and because I've had to do this for so long that, honestly, I, I have great trouble. I know the book way to answer the questions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I but I answer them according to the experiences that I've had over these past thirty five years with people, mm -hmm. and that is that people get divorced. Not because they don't love each other. It's because they don't like each other. Yep. That's why they get divorced. Yeah, yeah. And so in, in, the, in the context of what we're talking about, to the people that we're talking about, mm -hmm. we have some girls that a guy went to church and he got galvation. He never got salvation. <laughs> he got galvation. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, you my know, gosh. And the girl keeps the babies in church. Because all the stories of, you know, they grew up in church. I mean, you can take all these these rap artists. They all grow up in church. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And wow. none of them are in church now. Mm -hmm. So what what happened? They talk about their mom raised them. Mom raised them good. Mom raised, uh, raised them in church. Mom ra And anything good in that child's life is because of what the mother gave them. Right. Mm -hmm. What is the thing that went wrong in their life? It's what their father was. Mm-hmm. So if you put the, the child out to the father, if, and I'm only talking to people who, who the, the paternal um, individual, they don't pay child support, they don't want anyth anything to do with the kids, mm -hmm. and then they want to show up back again when the kid's 17. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. now they're too old to go out and get themselves a 20-year-old. Yeah. You know, yeah. now what it is is they're starting to think, oh my goodness. No, yeah. wait a minute. You gave me this pain 20 years ago. Yeah. 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 Now you got it now. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to wreck this kid's life now. 
If they want to call you when they're 30 years old, that's up to them. Mm -hmm. But just remember, if they do, they've already told me how they feel about what I had to go through in order to put them where they are. Wow. Well, look, our time is just about Powerful gone. topic. It's a very interesting topic. Yeah, yeah, powerful. Listen, allow God's grace to continue to flow in your life as a mighty river. Be blessed, everyone. Thanks for listening to JW Fusion with your hosts, James and Wendy B. 